Good morning. There's a couple here. There's probably close to 200 watching on Facebook. It's exciting to see uh, all the excitement. Um, but I want to encourage each one of you this morning that um, the Spirit is just like it was you guys were here this morning because um, I've told you many times we can recreate a lot of things, but we can't recreate the Holy Spirit. And we're going to invite Him in right into your room, right into your... Uh, I had a few say, uh, preach we could get used to uh, laying in our bed and watching Sunday morning. Uh-uh. Don't make me go take Facebook and throw our uh, stuff away and... Uh, we'll go back to the oldies but goodies, but uh, let's open up in prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, God, I just pray that you would just be with us. God, that you would put a hedge of protection around the ones of us that are here putting this out there. God, I pray that you would meet right in the rooms with everybody that's watching. God, I've seen many people, many, many people that uh, may have been here a long time ago or maybe it's been a while since I've seen them. And God, this excitement that is on the airwaves today, God, may you just continue to spur that along. God, let us be the church outside the church. And God, we ask these things in your name. Amen. I'm going to ask this morning as we start, I know there's a lot on here. You've seen what's happened um, in Laurel this last week. Um, and I'm going to ask you, through this week to just say a prayer for the families. Um, we meet today to figure out the logistics on how to uh, move forward in the funeral services, but I ask that you protect them, Lord. I've I, I, I seen things this week that you should never have to see, and I want you to pray for each parent, for each grandparent, and all the friends that were down there this week, and I just ask that you would pray for them Pray that they would have some time to get through this and that the Lord would be right there with them. But this morning, I don't know if you guys had watched last week or was here uh, the last time we were in the physical building, but I want to start this morning, I put the message title this morning as, What Card Has the Upper Hand? What Card Has the Upper Hand? We're still looking at the prodigal son in Luke 15, but last week we looked at how did the prodigal come back home. Now, we've looked up the word prodigal. We've found out that each one of us have been there, but nobody likes what the prodigal stands for. And many times in our lives we have been that prodigal. But how did the prodigal come back home? This morning I know there are people listening and watching that in your mind there is something that has caused you to go prodigal. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I at one time in my life went prodigal. I'm not proud of how it happened or what I did. But many today have been in a place in their life or they've been prodigal. Maybe it was a toxic relationship. I know many of you, if you were here, would say, I have been in a toxic relationship. Maybe a mistake that has tattooed you for life. Maybe a statement that you can't take back. Something that Satan is holding over your head. In your mind, you want to fix it. But you know you have, or you think you have, gone too far to come back home. Now I want to flesh out today what card has the upper hand. I know that many of you know that we could tell story after story about people that have left their husband or their wife and family because of an affair. I'm going to let that seek in just a moment this morning. It's kind of nice not to have people glaring at you when you start talking about those funny topics. But maybe you have been around or are one that started on the very thing that you're watching, which is Facebook. In my mind, 
I always try to figure it out. Many times we have tried to figure out why it happened. What caused it? What could we have done? Well, I want to tell you this morning, most of the time what happens is when you talk and build an emotional relationship with somebody or someone other than your spouse, you end up being more connected to them than you do your spouse. The enemy played that card that connected them emotionally. We have been talking about the spirit and the soul. And how many of you this morning know that our soul gets us in trouble? But I have a question for you. Is there an area of your life that Satan could play a card that would get you out of the game? Many of us know that Satan has used things to get you out of the game. Just like the prodigal. Just so we're clear, you and I give Satan the cards to play on us. The very thing that we don't want to let Satan know, we give them to him freely. Because when Jesus Christ died for you and I, he took that deck of cards away from the devil. So, why do we give him the cards one at a time? Have you ever sat and thought about why would you give the devil the card one at a time? Sometimes we verbalize it to him. You know, the devil can't tell what we're doing unless we verbalize it or give him the card. Have you ever said... And they are better than me because I couldn't serve God after that. And they're better than me because if I went through that situation or had that person, I could not stay a Christian. You know, when we verbalize those kind of things, when we talk about those type of things that might happen or could happen to us, and we tell the devil that that would drive us away. What this morning allows him not to use that against us. So when the devil hears this, he's sitting over in the corner taking notes. We talked about Satan being everywhere. We talked about Jesus being and God being omnipresent, meaning they're everywhere. So why wouldn't the devil sit in the corner and take notes? Now, I don't know about you, but there's been many times that I've felt like the devil was sitting right beside me. Taking notes, reading my mail, if you would. Now, I want to tell you this morning, don't give Satan the card, and upper hand. I want to go back to Luke 15 and read the story and stop. To illustrate the point further, we're in Luke 15, verse 11. Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die now we talked about earlier we talked about last week week before what would your dad or your mom do if you went and asked for the money before they died now my dad is a gentleman but if I was to go and disrespect him in that way I probably would be picking myself up off the ground he said, I want my share of the estate now before you die. For some reason, I have a hard time understanding where the respect comes from. So his father 
He agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this young son, younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money in wild living or being prodigal. Now, prodigal living, which you remember means living without restraint. Here are a few cards that has the upper hand. The first one I want to talk about this morning is secrets. Now, verse 13 says, a few days later. So if you read that, the son has been planning this for a little bit. He's probably been thinking about it. You reckon he pondered on it? The question is, do you have a secret? Do you have a secret fantasy about something? Because that secret fantasy that the prodigal had was greed. Now, for the prodigal, it was greed. But do you have one? This is what the son was thinking. If I have more money, I will be happy. Lord, how many times have we been that way? That special thing, if I could just get that thing, my life would be complete. If I could just have a little more money, I would be able to do this, which would make me happy. If I could get my hands on some money, if I could win the lottery, I would... Live like I wanted to. He was fantasizing about it. It was a secret. I want you to lean in this morning and listen. If you have a secret in your heart, you are in trouble. If you have a secret in your heart, you are in trouble. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 4, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, Then he separated the light from darkness. I want you to look and listen at this passage of Scripture. I never really thought about what it said. Now, God did not create the dark. He created the light. The darkness was already present. So, God never said, let there be darkness. You can look Scripture up and down, it's not there. He never said that darkness was good. Listen, this is why we are looking at it. You know where secrets are? Your secrets are in the darkness. In Jude chapter 1 verse 6, It says, and I remind you of the angels who did not stay within the limits of the authority God gave them, but left the place where they belong. God has kept them securely chained in prison of darkness, waiting for the great day of judgment. Now, if you look what Jude says, these are the angels that could not stay in heaven. Where do they live? They live in darkness. Where does Satan conduct his business? I want you to know this morning, Satan conducts his business in the dark. 
So I want you to listen this morning. If you have a secret, you need to get it out. Shed the light on it. You know, many times I've, even to this day, I think about when we started. I think about when we started 10 years ago in a basement. And I wished I could say I knew more now than I know then, but I don't. I'm still trying every day. But I think about when I told my story. You know, my story had many bumps and ups and downs. My story is ugly. And my story could have been used against me. But I want to tell you this morning, my story now, everybody knows. My story now is not hidden. It's not a secret. This morning, because I didn't hide my story, I cut the enemy's legs off at the knees because I shed light into my story. You know, Scripture says in James, confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. You may be set free. You may be made whole. It says that you may be healed. I want to look at John chapter 12 this morning. And it's the story where Mary poured expensive perfume on Jesus' feet. One of the disciples, he got mad about it. I want you to think about that greed part that is in every one of our bodies. One of the disciples got mad. In John chapter 12, verse 4, it says, But Judas Iscariot, the disciple who would soon betray him, said, That perfume was worth a year's wages. It should have been sold and the money given to the poor. Not that he cared for the poor. He was a thief. And since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole some for himself. Now, I would think that if you were in Jesus' midst, I mean, his physical being, would you not be terrified to skim off the top? You know, it doesn't matter whether he was there physically or if he's here today in spirit. When you look at someone else's stuff, and you say they ought to sell that and give it to the poor, you're not saying you care about the poor. Because you should sell your stuff. And give it to the fool. I think it's getting a little quiet on Facebook this morning. There's not as much enthusiasm in this room as there is when there's people here. <coughs> but here at Cross Point, we have the saddlebag, the box in the back of the church. To this day, we've never passed a plate. Because that's where God led us. And it's in the Bible. I've talked many times that we went by what it says. But if you remember that story that Jesus told where the widow gave more than anyone else. If you haven't read that, you need to Google that this morning. This afternoon, read it. Because it says he pulled up a chair... By the money box. So he could see how people give. Now, he 
goes on to talk about what he saw at that money box. The scripture says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And this morning, as we talk about secrets, as we talked about what Judas did, Do you think he's still sitting by that box? You know, many of us think we're right where we need to be with Jesus. But some may be in trouble this morning. He watches our how, our not, how much. He watches how we give. And this morning, if you're not giving, you're stealing. So what is in your heart that makes us not want to give? What makes us want to argue? When you hear what somebody talk about it, the very thing that many think runs out of the church, Is it because it's a secret? Or is it because you believe money equals happiness? Not God. Is it a secret? Is it a secret? That's a card that has the upper hand. The second thing I want to talk about this morning is sin. The sun went out drinking in excess. He was playing with immorality. Now, in Genesis chapter 25, verse 29, it says, One day when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau arrived home from the wilderness. He was exhausted and hungry. Now Esau said to Jacob, I'm starved. Give me some of that red stew. This is how Esau got the other name, Edom, which means red. All right, Jacob replied. But trade me your rights as the firstborn son. Look, I'm dying of starvation, said Esau. What good is my birthright to me now? But Jacob said, first, you must swear that your birthright is mine. So Esau swore an oath thereby selling all his rights as firstborn to his brother Jacob. Now being firstborn, you get more than second. And he knew that. Now this story is crazy. It's crazy enough that the New Testament says, don't be like Esau who sold his birthright for a morsel of food. Don't be controlled by fleshly appetites. You know, there's a lot of fleshly things that could control us. I mean, in a moment of fleshly desire, we could lose our family. One moment of gratification, you could lose your job Or your family. As I said, firstborn. Got twice the inheritance. The prodigal gave up his inheritance. For fleshly desires. My question today. Is are you controlled by your flesh? 
Do you have ongoing sin in your life? This morning, as I start to close, as the guys come up, God told the children of Israel, you go into the promised land and you kill everyone basically walking. He said you kill men, women, and this is how Scripture says it, babies and nursing infants. Now, we might think that was a little harsh. But that's what God said to the children of Israel. Now, stick with me. I promise that it's going somewhere. You know, that's hard to understand. Why would God say, kill the baby? Here's why. Because babies grow up to be 250 pound men with a sword in hand and mad as a hornet because you killed their daddy. Now, these were nations that God had given a chance to repent. These were nations that God had given a chance to repent. They said, no, we want our idols. We don't want God. We want our idols. So God said, wipe them out. So God said, Israel, when you go into the promised land, you better kill them all. Because you, if you let any remain, they will be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your side. They'll bother you your whole life. Remember God's told Saul to kill all the Amalekites and he didn't do it he didn't follow what God said so what happened to Saul Saul had to fight them all his life and that's who ended up killing him we could go look at David when he fought the Philistines. I'm not trying to get you to wrap your mind around why God told them to do away with the Amalekites and why God told the children of Israel to kill them all. But I'd like for you to entertain something in your heart this morning. I want to ask you, do you have sin in your life? Now you might say, preach, yeah, I do have sin in my life, but it's just little bitty. God knows I'm working on it. I, it it's, it's so minute. And it really... I mean, God's got bigger fish to fry. I want to tell you this morning, in my own life, this is true. In my own life, I've had those little sins. And I want to tell you something this morning. Those little sins, they may be small, but they grow up. And in the end, those little sins, they grow up and they will kill you.
and it will take the upper hand. I'm going to ask everybody that is watching. I don't care where you are. If you're in your car, pull over. Because I want you to bow your heads with me this morning. Even sitting in your room, sitting in your living room, it doesn't feel any more weird than if I was, you were standing here with me. Because it's weird today. Because we're used to being together. Maybe you're watching this online. Because there's so many people watching, you can fit into the cracks. But I want you to bow your heads with me. Maybe there's some sin in your life and maybe you've never asked Jesus into your heart this morning. Preach told God a long time ago, I'd never close a service without giving you an invitation. So right where you are this morning, I'm giving you the opportunity today. If you do not know, if you were to die today, where you would live eternity. Now we always tell people, we don't care what you believe. You are welcome to be in our midst any time of the day or not. But today, there's nobody looking around in your house. There's nobody paying attention to you driving down the road. You're not going to feel weird. But this morning, if you are watching, watching or listening, and you do not know if God was to come back today where you'd be. I want to ask you this morning, just by raise a hand right where you are. I'm not trying to get you to do anything that I wouldn't do if I was in your situation. But as you raise your hand this morning, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to lead you in the sinner's prayer just so you can be sure that when this broadcast goes off that you'll know where you stand with God. So please pray with me this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray today God, as we've already seen one salvation already and we haven't even started praying God, I ask right now for the ones that has raised their hand. They've raised their hand and said, Lord, I need you now. In the midst of this coronavirus, in the midst of all this uncertainty today, God, I need you more than I ever have. God, I don't know how to have peace without you being in my life. Please come into my heart. I ask that you forgive me of my sins. I believe that you died on Calvary's cross and that you rose again. Lord, I thank you for that free gift. This morning, while we're not going anywhere yet, please get on and tag yourself right where you are and let us know that you accepted Christ this morning because this whole day this whole time we've been here this morning playing around before a service and then worshiping you has been all worth that one salvation that we had today will you be number two will you be number three Please get on and share. Let us know. But I want to pray right now. I'm going to pray for our nation. I'm going to pray for the people that have sin in their life that they want to be able to break the yokes of that bondage. 
I want you to pray with me this morning. Lord, as we come back to you, God, I ask that you help me get rid of that sin, that bondage, that thing that is in the dark, that secret that nobody knows in my family. Maybe it's a secret that your wife doesn't know. Maybe it's a secret that your husband doesn't know. Maybe you're a youth this morning and there's a secret that you need to let mom and dad on. God, I pray that through this time, through this funny feeling time that we're going through, God, that you would wrap your loving arms around each person that's here, each person that's watching online. God, may you allow them to get right, upright, right in front of you today. That small sin that prodigal thing that is inside their spirit that's inside their soul that's causing them so much grief Lord I ask today God as we continue Lord I pray that you would help them and God as we allow the band to play this morning. I'm going to give you some time where you have just you and God. While they play the song, as we lift our eyes to heaven this morning. God, I pray for the ones that are sick. The ones that think they may have the virus of 2020. God, we're not in fear of anything but God we are being smart you give us a mind you give us thoughts and you expect us to use them so as the band plays spend some time with him Who you are, you are, you are 
way make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are way make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness you are this morning I don't know what's going on in your life I don't know what kind of hardships this has put on you I know that a lot of people are nervous, scared and don't know what to do I know the times are uncertain I know that all of us are looking for a reason an end date But I want to encourage you this morning. He never stopped working. And I know I got plenty of time because y'all can go in the room and get in the cabinets and get you some Cheetos. But I'm going to ask the guys at Fed play this song one more time. Because I truly believe that there's somebody here watching today that is at the end of their rope 
that doesn't know what they're going to do tomorrow for food because they don't have any money. Maybe you don't have a job. Maybe, maybe your job is shut down. Maybe you haven't got the tips that you usually get right here in our community. I want you to know that God hasn't stopped working. And you know, sometimes we have to praise Him through the storms. Sometimes there's things that happen that we can't control, like right now. There's not one thing we can do to get better, to change the course, because this virus is here. But we don't have to live in a spirit of fear. God didn't call us to that. Maybe you're one of the ones that's got it all together. I want you to start praying right now as we sing this song one more time. If you're there today, you can get on your knees right in your house. You can, you can sit on your couch. You can bow your head. You can stand and worship. You can lift your hands. But I believe that God's wanting to minister to somebody right here that's watching right now. Maybe it's two days from now when you're watching this over again. God has you. He's not going to forsake you. He's going to stand with you through this storm. You know, when Peter was in the boat and the waves started crashing, and, he, and God said, Jesus said, come, come to me. Step out of that water. Step out on the water. I can imagine what was in Peter's mind. When he stepped out and Peter took his eyes off Christ and started looking at the wind and the waves and the storm and his surroundings and he started to sink. There's people right now where we are and you're starting to sink. You're letting this fear get injected into your mind and God is not a spirit of fear this morning. We have confidence because we serve Christ. So this morning, as they sing this song, grab a hold of it and listen to what it says. Because God wants you this morning to do the right thing. Not go and get out into the community. Stay where you are. Go to work. Wash your hands. But he's not in a spirit of fear. And we rebuke that in the name of Jesus. We want you to sing with us. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Yes, you are. You are way maker, miracle work.
Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, God, I, I don't even know what to say. God, I thank you for being here in this room. God, I thank you for letting your Holy Spirit come in and touch us today, even when all our peeps are out watching from home. God, there's this, this video is going to go around the world in the next few days, and God, I pray right now that it gives somebody the hope that you are still on the throne, that this isn't going to get us, that it's just a bump in the road, that we have to have the faith of a mustard seed. God, this is not going to tear down the church. It may hurt this building, but it's not going to tear down the church. It's not going to tear down you and I. God, I pray. Pray that you be with each one of us, that you keep everybody here well. So that this week, when we go live on Wednesday night for the first time ever in Cross Point's history, God, that you would bless that. God, that you would give Mike the strength to come in and give what God's put on his heart. God, I just pray right now for each person here. I pray for each person that is at home. God, I pray for all the people that said, Preach, this is the first time we were going to come to church. LOL. Sorry you're not there. God, grab a hold of their heart too. Lord, let them know that they need to be here. God, they hadn't even been in the building before. But God, I pray that you convict their heart. That you woo their spirit closer to you. God, right now, on my heart, God, I lift up Pappy. Lord, we rebuke, rebuke Satan in the name of Jesus. God, we don't have to be branded on what the doctors say. God, they're not right. And God, that three to five years they give him this week, Lord, we rebuke that. God, we pray that he lives his life to fullness. God, that you heal his lungs today right where he is. God, I pray that he feels that fresh anointing from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. God, we ask for a touch like he's never felt. God, we pray that you wrap your loving arms around him right where he sits. That one day he doesn't even have to use the oxygen that he's on today. God, we just pray that you would be with us. That you would guide and direct us. In your name we pray. As we close, before we get off, I want to encourage each one of you. I thank you for not mobbing us and trying to get in the building. But we've been asked by the city of Connersville to feed our community. Where I know that many are saying, what are you doing? I believe that in this time, we have to be the church. You're going to see us live on Facebook. You're going to see us taking care of our community. The city of Connersville is paying for all the food. It has been given to the city of Connersville by businesses, other churches. And while we can't all jump on board and we can't all show up, we have been in contact with the ones that want to help. And if you haven't been contacted yet, don't come. We're going to start on Monday morning. There's going to be times and places where even our church family can come and eat. If you should want to help, you can call the church and offer. That doesn't mean that we will use you. 
because I've got to be careful on who we use. I want to protect us till this thing's over with. But I ask you pray for the leadership that you help us to take care of the ones that we can feed. And if you need food, we're going to be feeding this whole week, possibly into the next. We've ordered more food than I've ever ordered in Connorsville in my life. We ask that you pass the word. We'll have it on our web page. We'll have it on our Facebook page. It'll be on my page. It's going to be shared by everyone. If you need food, I know that the schools are feeding the kids, but there's mom and dads and, and families that are running low or maybe scared they're going to run low or they're going to run out before this is over with. There is not an age. There's not a limit. It doesn't matter if you have lots of money or you have none. The city of Connersville, we're going to kill this anxious spirit that's here in this town. We're going to feed you. It doesn't cost anything. We're going to have the six-foot perimeter. We probably won't be able to talk to you. We'll have everything in to-go trace where we're not in contact with you. But I ask this week that you pray for everyone that is on our disaster team that's going to try to feed Connersville. And I ask that you pray for us, that God would keep us safe. Don't forget that through this time, even the church building is going on and where we know that some don't have the money because of buying extra food and whatnot maybe not working we ask that if you have extra if you continue to give just like you have so that we may continue to reach people through this tough time i want you to always remember that preach loves you and so does cross point you guys have a good evening.